They are convening having arrived. All members will please report to the floor of the House and take their seats. All members, clerk will ring the bell. All members will please come to the floor of the House and take their seats. We're about to have the morning roll call. All right, we're going to have the call of the roll. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning to everyone. Hope everyone had a uh, good weekend and got a little bit of rest from the uh, week we had last week. The chair has the pleasure of having the chaplain of the day today, and it's been a busy morning. I asked Chairman Battles if he would to write my introduction to... Um, When he, when he got to page 19, I told him I thought that would be enough, so uh, I do appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. I'm honored to introduce the um, chaplain of the day today, and she's here for two reasons, because she is doing a fantastic and dynamic job at a church that uh, uh, is special to me. Uh, Reverend Rebecca Holmes is the pastor of the Cardike United Methodist Church in Gilmer County, uh, a place that I spent a good bit of my youth at and, uh, and remember very fondly. And since her arrival there, uh, it is growing and uh, is, is, has become a very, very uh, more vibrant um, part of the Gilmer County community and we're just very pleased with the great job that you're doing there, Reverend Holmes. Rebecca Holmes is a native of Mobile, Alabama. She earned a BS degree in biology from the University of Colorado and a master's degree in entomology from Oklahoma State University. I asked her, I hope to tell you, her text today will be from bugs to the ministry. Um, she said she hadn't figured that one out, but... Um, Prior to going to seminary, she worked at Emory University in biological research and later earned her Master of Divinity degree from the Candler School of Theology. And she's married to a minister, and uh, he's with us today, and I want you all to welcome Reverend Michael Worth Wilson, who is the pastor of the Wood Station United Methodist Church in Ringo. Uh, Representative Weldon's not here, uh, but uh, thank you very much for being here. If you'd give him a hand. So it's a real honor for me to introduce to you uh, Reverend Rebecca Holmes, the pastor of the Cardike United Methodist Church near LJ. Reverend Holmes. Well, thank you so much. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning. 
It is an honor and a privilege also to be the pastor of such a wonderful church as Carter K United Methodist is. I thank God every day that I am there. Yesterday, we talked about the prophet Micah, and he has words for us that reach out over the centuries, over time and space, and he had a word for his people then, and he has a word for us now, and I want to read that word that I think is important for us to remember. And it says, he has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The Hebrew verb for require in this passage is not in the sense of it is required by law, not that the teacher requires a book report. It has undertones of affection, and it is, talks about the healthiest forms of dependency, like a child needing his mother's love. And it also invokes a, a feeling and a mood of seeking, as lovers seeking one another, as a shepherd seeking a lost sheep. It's not about God insisting or demanding but it is about God who is seeking justice, kindness, and mercy. That God yearns for these things, and he needs for us to partner with him to help him achieve his purposes here on earth. The word justice in here is not about rewarding good behavior or punishing bad behavior. It is about ensuring that everyone has what they need. And a society that is built on God's justice seeks to lift up the neediest in our society. In the book of Romans, Paul talks about how the whole of creation is groaning for redemption. Well, I think God is groaning. He is yearning for us to help him bring in the kingdom of heaven. And we must always remember that the justice of the world and the justice of God are two radically different things. The justice of the world says, hey, I want my just due. I have clawed my way to the top. I have scraped my way up the ladder. I have pulled myself up by my bootstraps, and by golly, I deserve the biggest, the best, and the most of everything, and you don't necessarily do. It is survival of the fittest. It is survival of the most savvy, the most clever, the most cunning. The world's justice is not about ensuring that everyone has what it needs. It is about me getting mine and too bad for you. The justice of the world does not usher in the kingdom of God, but God's justice does. Because whenever we hear the cries of the hungry in our neighborhoods, both close and far, we are helping and helping to feed the hungry. We are bringing in the kingdom. When we clothe the naked, when we engage in acts of mercy, when we show kindness to others, when we visit the imprisoned, when we help to get decent, affordable housing for people, when we care for the homeless, when we champion mental health issues, when we help to get affordable health care for people and try to break the cycle of abuse, and I could go on and on and on. Whenever we help people become the best that they can be, we are ushering in the kingdom. It's one of the things that I love so much about Carter K. United Methodist. They are so mission-oriented. They have a thrift store 
that help so many people in our community. We also have a victory garden that gives 30,000 pounds of fresh produce every year to the Gilmer County uh, Food Bank. They are involved in the kids' cottage, helping parents and children be reunited. And they, we also package 27,704 uh, packages of food for Stop Hunger Now. And we know that all of that food went to the Philippines after the hurricane. And that's just a few of the things that this church does. They are always trying to, to reach out and to be Jesus for others and to bring in the kingdom and to help wherever they can. Now, I am not a pie-in-the-sky dreamer. I am a realist. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I know that there's only so much we can do. Uh, my church is not going to solve all the poverty issues, all the drug issues, all the ills in our community. We cannot possibly meet everyone's needs, but we do what we can where we are with the resources that we have. And when I think about your job, you have a lot of power in your hands. You can choose to exert power over or power with and for. Your vote, yes or no, on an issue impacts millions of people. It is an awesome responsibility and frankly, one that I don't want. I don't know how you do it because you are always going to be pleasing somebody and displeasing someone else. I guess it's a lot like the ministry at times. You can't make everybody happy. But I commend you for taking up the challenge, for serving the people of Georgia. What I ask of you in the name of Jesus Christ that whenever you are voting on an issue, that you would remember what the Lord requires of you, that he requires, he yearns for, he seeks for you to do justice, of using your power to help people, to have power with and for, and not that power over to love kindness, to be merciful, remembering how much that you have received because everybody here has a job. You've got a home, you've got food, you've got people that you love and people who love you and that's more than a lot of people have. And I ask that you will always walk humbly with your God, remembering always that you are the creature, that you are the created and not the creator. You have an awesome responsibility. And at Carter K, we pray for you and we will continue to pray for you. And we know that you care about us and care about the state of Georgia. So let us pray. Lord, give to all people who have authority over others the wisdom to govern well and the grace to know in their hearts that nothing is firm which is not just. Give hope to our elected officials and all who work tirelessly in our state government. May they never feel that their efforts are futile. Help them face the challenges and the struggles of today and of the future. Give them courage and strength to lead with kindness and mercy and to walk humbly with you. And now may God bless all of you and may God keep you and may God protect you from yourself, and may God lead you into eternity. 
and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes Chairman Chokas, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits had reviewed the uh, journals of the previous legislative day and have found them to be correct. Chairman Chokas, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. O'Neill, the 146 moves that the following be established as the order of business during the first part of the period of unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions, report of standing committees, third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions, morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 887 by Representative Houston of the 170th to amend code section 48-11-4 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the licensing of persons engaged in tobacco business, initial and annual fees. Regulated industries. House Bill 888 by Representative Holt of the 112th to provide a homestead exemption from the city of Rutledge ad valorem taxes. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 889 by Representative Weldon of the third to amend Article 3 of Chapter 19 and Title 15 of the Official Code of Georgia annotated relating to the regulation of the practice of law. Judiciary. House Bill 890 by Representative Atwood of the 179th to amend Code Section 15-6-21 of the Official Code of Georgia annotated relating to fees for sheriff services. Judiciary. House Bill 891 by Representative Fleming of the 121st to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the Official Code of Georgia Georgia annotated. Governmental to Affairs. House Bill 1198 by Representative Coomer, the 14th, honoring the life of Trooper First Class Donald Francis Langston. Transportation. House Resolution 1199 by Representative Kidd, the 145th, commending Mr. Bobby Eugene Parham. Transportation. House Resolution 1200 by Representative Roberts of the 155th, honoring the life of Trooper James David Young. Transportation. House Resolution 1201 by Representative Gordon of the 163rd, encouraging the City Council of Savannah to adopt a local ordinance authorizing and regulating street food vending. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. That completes first readings.
Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. HB 870 by Representative Tanner of the 9th, a bill relating to the Brain and Spinal Injury Trust Fund. HB 871 by Representative Sims of the 169th, a bill to provide a homestead exemption from Jeff Davis County School District ad valorem taxes. HB 872 by Representative Rogers of the 10th, a bill relating to privileges. HB 873 by Representative Gasway of the 28th, a bill to create Stevens County Public Facilities Authority. HB 874 by Representative Dudgeon of the 25th, a bill relating to generation and distribution of electricity. HB 875 by Representative Jaspers of the 11th, a bill to change provisions relating to carrying weapons and issuance of weapons carry licenses. HB 876 by Representative Harbin of the 122nd, a bill relating to expense allowances and travel cost reimbursement for members of certain boards and commissions. HB 877 by Representative Rogers Roberts of the 155th. A bill relating to motor vehicles, HB 878 by Representative Powell of the 32nd. A bill relating to general provisions for abandoned motor vehicles, HB 879 by Representative England of the 116th. A bill relating to, pro to provide for the creation of one or more community districts in Barrow County and in each municipality therein, HB 880 by Representative England of the 116th. A bill to authorize Barrow County to exercise all redevelopment and other powers under the Redevelopment Powers Law, HB 881 by Representative Epps of the 144th. A bill relating to special license plates promoting and supporting beneficial projects and entities. HB 882 by, uh, by Representative Beasley Teague of the 65th, a bill relating to educational programs relative to the Quality Basic Education Act. HB 883 by Representative Strickland of the 111th, a bill relating to Georgia Merchant Acquirer Limited Purpose Banks. HB 884 by Representative Sims of the 169th. A bill relating to the number of superior court judges for each judicial circuit, HB 885 by Representative Peake of the 141st. A bill relating to the use of cannabis for treatment of cancer and glaucoma. HB 886 by Representative Caldwell of the 20th. A bill relating to elementary and secondary education. House Resolution 1183 by Representative Tanner of the 9th. Resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution so as to provide that the General Assembly by general law may impose additional penalties or fees for the offense of reckless driving may provide for the allocation of such additional penalties or fees to the Brain and Spinal Injury Trust Fund. H.R. 1184 by Representative Green of the 151st, a resolution honoring Mr. William Riley Curry, dedicating a bridge in his memory. H.R. 1185 by Representative Drenner of the 85th, a resolution encouraging statewide participation in Green Apple Day of Service. H.R. 1186 by Representative Geisinger of the 48th, a resolution requesting the State Board of Education, the Department of Education, to impose as a requirement for high school graduation the successful completion of a Skills for Success financial literacy class. Senate Bill 298 by Senator Murphy of the 27th, a bill relating to special vehicle decals for persons with disabilities. Three second readers. Reports of standing committees, the clerk will read. Representative Jan Tankersley of the 160th District, Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination, submit the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination has had under consideration the following bills of the House and has instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 822, do pass. House Bill 836, do pass. House Bill 850, do pass. House Bill 856, do pass. House Bill 857, do pass. House Bill 858, do pass. House Bill 865, do pass. House Bill 866, do pass. House Bill 867, do pass. Respectfully submitted, Rep Representative Jan Tankersley. All right, we're about to go on to the local calendar. We're about to go on to the local calendar. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. One bill on the local calendar relates to homestead exemption and requires a recorded two-thirds roll call vote for passage. If there is no objection on the local calendar, I'm sorry, if there's no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 822 by Representative Coleman of the 97th Gwinnett County. House Bill 836 by Representative Chokas of the 138th Sumter County. House Bill 850 by Representative Sharper of the 177th Lowndes County. 
House Bill 857 by Representative Sims of the 169th Bacon County. House Bill 858 by Representative Smyre of the 135th Columbus Muskogee County. House Bill 865 by Representative Houston of the 170th Berrien County. House Bill 866 by Representative Powell of the 171st Colquitt County. House Bill 867 by Representative Kelly of the 16th Polk County. House Bill 856 by Representative Sims of the 169th Coffee County. That completes the reading of the calendar. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall the bills on the local calendar now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bills on the local calendar. The ayes are 160, the nays are zero. These bills, having received the requisite constitutional majority, are therefore passed. The House will come to order. We're about to go on to morning orders. We're about to go on to morning orders. Okay, Chair recognizes Representative Abel Mabel Thomas for a morning order. Representative Thomas. House will be at order. We Chair asks that we give members in the well our attention and respect. Representative Thomas. It's high tech, I see, I see. All right, thank you very much. I would like to, uh, first of all, thank the speaker and the members of, uh, fellow members and distinguished members of this body. Uh, I rise today after reflection to say thank God for his comfort and guidance as we made it through the snow jam last week. I would like to thank all first responders, fire, police, state patrol, sheriffs, medical personnel, and even the National, Georgia National Guard, but I also would like to thank the citizens of Georgia for acting as neighbors, for helping others and helping others to help themselves. I think that what happened last week, teamwork was at play and parents were caring and patient. Additionally, I'd like to bring note to the bus drivers and school personnel who stayed the course and provided leadership and that's what it came down to, was leadership day and night. I say that they earned their pay and their unemployment benefits. In Atlanta, there were donuts and coffee prepared for bus drivers today at their two facility locations. I was thinking maybe a 2% raise in the budget. All right. But a Tuesday ago, I when the speaker became the speaker to the caucus, 
we, I talked about what middle ground could we come to as a body? What type of bipartisan bill could we put in that would make Georgians proud of ourselves and proud of the work that we're doing up here? Well, he reminded us that one bipartisan thing that we do is the budget. And so we did pass the amended budget. And we do have the big budget. But also, he talked about maybe some other pieces of legislation. Well, I think that um, some type of emergency response or protocol bill dealing with the weather and unexpected circumstances would also be in order. Now, I understand by hearing the news the other day that the governor is going to have a press conference and sort of put in place a, a committee. By me not knowing the nature of the committee and how it's going to be composed, I'm not sure whether or not members of this body will be a part of it. But obviously, if there's any committee being put in place, I think the members of the Georgia General Assembly, we should have representation. But also, if it does not include us in representation, I still think that we have a responsibility as legislators to be sure that we, as the governing body, put in some type of legislation that's put some type of protocols in place to make sure that we don't go through what we went through last week. So basically, I just rise to say it was um, it really, during this time, I've heard so many different stories that have been told about what happened and what, you know, what people went through. My own seatmate, Representative Alexander from 66, I was calling her and uh, during that time, and uh, she was telling me that she had left here at 12.30, but still didn't get home to 9.30. And so I was just checking on, I didn't really have no idea that she really was stuck in the storm. But I'm just saying that uh, many of us were able to get to safe shelter, but there was a lot of suffering and pain that happened in Georgia last week. And so as a part of the healing process, you know, there have been apologies and that type of thing, and that is the first step. But now that the apologies have been stated, we do have to have an action plan, and I do think it's incumbent upon this body for us to be in leadership as far as what happens, not just the executive branch. Thank you, and God bless. Chair recognizes Representative Al Williams for a morning order. Representative Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In spite of what you might think, no, that's not why I'm here. But good morning, all of you. I'm here with a very pleasant, pleasant, pleasant duty this morning. And down in Liberty County, it, it, uh, I'm very proud of the leadership there and the way the county is growing and also the way Liberty County treats its military community. This just does not just happen as Representative Ron Stevens, who is in our delegation, can attest to, we're very supportive of that. But it's because we continue to develop the type of leadership that's necessary to make things happen. And I'm very privileged to have some members of Leadership Liberty with us this morning, and they're led by the CEO of our tourism and our Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Leo Poole. If you all would stand and let us welcome you properly to our house, please. Um, And I, I want you to know that even though she isn't officially in the delegation, we consider our DOT board member one of our member of our delegation, and good to see you, Commissioner Purcell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, we're going to continue to be in order. We're going to recognize some very distinguished Georgians, some friends. Clerk will read the caption to an invite resolution. House Resolution 1214, commending Ann R. Purcell and inviting her to be recognized by the House of Representatives and for other purposes. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee, Chairman Ron Stevens, for an invite resolution. Chairman Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, today it's my extreme honor uh, to recognize one of our own. 
As you might remember, those of you that have been around uh, for the past 18 years, Ann Purcell has served in this body and served well, representing Effingham County, Chatham, and others on coastal Georgia. Um, every now and then, one of us really rises to the top. So I'd like to tell you about uh, this award called the Cross of Merit. It, is, it was established back in 1951. Uh, only one other Georgian, as far as we know, have e has ever received the award. It is the highest award and the highest tribute that can be paid to individuals for service to their nation for either a German or a non-German. Ladies and gentlemen, would you help me welcome the Consul General of the Republic of Germany, uh, Christoph Sonder, please. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this great honor. And it really is a great honor and privilege for me to be able to speak here on the floor of the Georgia House, especially on a day when the Georgia House recognizes one of its former members for the fact that I had the privilege last fall to present her with the German Order of Merit. And the German president bestowed that great honor on Anne Purcell for the untiring work that she did for German-American relations, for the Georgia Salzburger Society, and especially for her community down in Effingham. And I visited that little community last year. And it's really great for me as a, the German uh, Consul General here in the Southeast to see that this is where the Germans stepped ashore um, over 200 years ago and that this was also the place where the first governor of the state of Georgia under the US Constitution, Mr. Treutlein, was born and grew up. So it's a great honor um, that we could bestow that order of merit to Anne Purcell, and I really appreciate on the behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany that the Georgia House is recognizing Anne Purcell for that fact here today, Anne. Wow, it's great to be back here today and to greet each and every one of you. My love is in this house. It was a fraternity that I will never forget. But it is also the fact that I will continue to love our beautiful Georgia and I will still be a spokesperson, whether it be on the Department of Transportation Board or whether it be to in our World Trade Centers in regards to what our country is all about. It is indeed an honor. This is unusual that I'm here being the one honored because most of the time I'm inviting people to the House floor so that I can toot their horns about what they're doing. But I want to tell you that the partnership that we have with our Germans, the Federal Republic of Germany, is an outstanding partnership. Our partnership in economic development is one that is, is very, very highly recognized throughout the country. I have had the opportunity to gain many friends across uh, in Germany, of whom I stay in contact with regularly. We have been able to work with Hollow Germany to make it a sister city of Savannah. We've also been able to say, when my family arrived here in 1734, that the consul general, general related to was the fact that we were brought here under the guidance, the Christian leadership of uh, our Martin Boltzius, who was the pastor that came and led our people. About 157 of our folks arrived here. About two thirds of those died within the first year. They died not because that we were expelled from the countries over in, in Austria, but our, made our way through Germany. But we, my ancestors, died of the mosquitoes. But nevertheless, we made it here, and there was all of the group that arrived, and I'm proud to be a part and a spokesperson as I visit in, in Germany and have our German friends visit us. It is an honor to accept this award, but it is also a very much an honor that I appear before you today. God bless you, and God bless our wonderful USA.
House will continue to be in order. House will continue to be in order. Chair recognizes Chairman Dixon, Chairman Tom Dixon, for an invite resolution. And Representative Broderick. Mr. Speaker, members of the House, it's my privilege and pleasure to introduce to you from Northwest Whitfield High School in Whitfield County, the Class 4A Ladies Softball State Champs. On, this, on the dais up here, we have the six seniors are on the team. Up in the gallery, we have the rest of the softball team. If they'd stand, let's greet the, the ladies from the school. Clark would read the caption. House Resolution 1166 by Representative Dixon of the Sixth and Broderick of the Fourth, recognizing and commending the Northwest Whitfield County High School Lady Bruin softball team no. on their 2013 GHSA Class 4A state championship and inviting them to be recognized by the House of Representatives and for other purposes. Mr. Speaker, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the coach of the team, Coach Jason Brooker, uh, who is in his first two years as a coach, has two years as state champs. Wow. Wow. Coach Brooker. Glad to have you with us. Good to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Mr. Dixon for this opportunity to come visit. Um, it's a great honor to coach these young ladies. Um, if you ever have a chance to come out and watch um, female high school sports. It's a great opportunity. It's really growing. I know football is king around here, but if, if you're not busy in the fall and have a chance to watch these, any girls play, there's a lot of good talent even around the city of Atlanta. Most of the talent's in North Georgia, but there's still talent around here. Um, but it's great to teach and coach in this state, and we're just honored to be here, and we, we're glad for this opportunity. Thank you. House will continue to be in order. House will continue to be in order. Chair recognizes the chairman of the House Ethics Committee, Chairman Wilkinson, to introduce the doctor of the day, Chairman Wilkinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and fellow members of the House. For the 10th time, the 10th time, uh, we are fortunate and thankful to welcome as our doctor of the day, Maureen Olson. Uh, she is board certified in emergency medicine. She completed her residency training at Emory School of Medicine and worked in private practice for many years. She is the, bass, the past president of the college, the Georgia College of Emergency Physicians and remains a member of the board of directors. She has served on the national steering committee for the American College of Emergency Physicians, ASEP, and continues to serve in their national council. Dr. Olson has also served on several national committees for ASEP. She was appointed to the Ombudsman Disability Services Medical Review Group for the state of Georgia by Governor Purdue and reappointed by Governor Deal. Dr. Olson is also a past chair for the Regents Advisory Committee on Health and continues to be a member of that board. Dr. Olson has been the medical director for Georgia Tech Student Health Services since 2009. Please join me in welcoming back Dr. Maureen Olson.
Thank you very much. I've done this for many years, and it's always a privilege and a pleasure. As medical director of Georgia Tech, I would just like to thank you all for your service, and I wish you a very healthy and productive session. Chair wants to welcome to the floor of the House a former member of this body, former Representative Cicely Hill. Thank you for being with us. All right, we're going on to the rules calendar. We're going on to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption. To House Bill 774. House Bill 774. House Bill 774 by Representative Watson of the 172nd, relating to highways, bridges, and ferries, so as to require the annual submission of a statewide strategic plan progress, a progress report to provide for an increase to limitations of counties and municipalities for negotiating contracts involving public roads and for other purposes. This bill having come before the Committee on Transportation, the committee recommends the same do pass and be read for the third time. Chair recognizes Representative Sam Watson to present the bill. Representative Watson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I bring before you today HB 774. Uh, this is a department bill uh, that deals with several different things. Uh, but to start with, the, the first thing that we're doing is we're changing some reporting from uh, semi-annually to annually. Um, this will help save state dollars and allow personnel to focus on uh, one uh, report and do other planning uh, in the rest of the year. Second thing this thing's doing is increasing the bid caps uh, for municipalities and counties. Um, if you saw the commissioner's budget presentation, uh, he talked about quick response projects. Um, the bid cap going from 20000 to 200000 uh, was part of those projects, and what those projects have allowed the state to do um, is to build these projects, um, have some flexibility. As you know, there's not much you can do with $20,000 anymore. Third thing we're doing is just cleaning up some language. Uh, we're striking accident reports from the section. Uh, Department of Driver Services does not keep accident reports. GDOT keeps all accident reports. Uh, you've got a handout uh, on your desk, and it kind of explains a lot of, a lot of the different things in this bill. We're also defining some traffic behavior on uh, flashing yellow and red arrows and also ramp meters. Those are already in operation. And we're just defining that and putting it in a statute. Last thing we're doing is uh, putting the state's ability uh, into statute to increase uh, speed limits on urbanized interstates. Uh, of course, this would be done uh, only after a study had been done to make sure that it was safe to do so. I'd appreciate your favorable consideration. And Mr. Speaker, I'll yield for questions if we've got you have, any. You have a question. Do you yield? Yes, sir, I do. Chair recognizes Representative Buckner for a question. A friendly question. These are good cleanups. But I did have a question back home. Because many times when we want to put in a new traffic light or have an enhanced intersection of some sort, they always ask for the accident report in order to approve the new traffic light. So the fact that this is moving from driver services to DOT, that report will be available for us to get the traffic lights that we need based on that information, correct? That's correct. Uh, GDOT already keeps all accident reports. Department of Driver uh, Services does not. Uh, so we're just cleaning up the statute to make it show that. 
Uh, this was uh, actually uh, supported by DDS, uh, but the Department of Audits also requested that we do this just to keep everything consistent in statute. Thank you. It's a good bill. Thank you for yielding. Thank you. You have another question if you yield. Uh, yes, sir. Chair recognizes Representative Bentley for a question. Thank you, Representative, for presenting this bill. Um, you had mentioned about local governments. With me being a former county commissioner, I just want to be absolutely sure uh, what type of savings this is going to be for local governments. It's going to be one of those unfunded mandates that I often hear from my local counties that they don't want from the state. So can you help explain that to me, please? Well, what, what this, is, this is doing is it's just giving them the flexibility uh, to go in and perform a project that they see they need, whether it be for an economic development reason. Um, currently, right now, if, if, they, if they would like to put in a turning lane, they would have to go through the state, and it could take as long as four to six months to get that project completed. With this bill here, they would be able to go in. If they see the need for it, they can put in the turning lane and do it immediately upon uh, receiving a bid. So it's just kind of a, it gives them the flexibility to, to go ahead and, and do that to help their economies grow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You have no further questions. All right, Mr. Speaker, I thank you and I appreciate your favorable consideration. You have no further questions. No one else is speaking on the bill. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on House Bill 774? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 774 will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of House Bill 774, the ayes are 157, the nays are seven, this bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Okay, um, we have a number of pages here today, so the chair is going to ask if you have pages here today, come and take up position down near the podium. We'll be doing those photographs immediately upon adjournment. The clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged re resolutions. The following three invite resolutions to be read and referred to the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 1164, recognizing February 4th, 2014 as Veterinary Medicine Day at the State Capitol. House Resolution 1202, recognizing February 4th as Equine Youth Day at the State Capitol and inviting the world champions to be recognizing by the House. House Resolution 1214, commending Ann R. Purcell and inviting her to be recognized by the House of Representatives and for other purposes. Recognizing and commending the seven under Tucker Lions football team. Recognizing and commending David and Gloria Ritter for their outstanding and selfless service in support of a deployed U.S. Army soldier. Recognizing and commending Kennison Grace Blackerby. Honoring the life and memory of Sandy H. Sanders. Recognizing and commending George Bill Wissing and Dolores Bischoff Wissing on their 60th anniversary. Commending Ava Bullard and recognizing February 4th, 2014 at Ava Law Day at the Capitol. 
That completes the reading of privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none and the resolutions are adopted. All right, we have, uh, we have a few announcements. I ask you to stay in order and listen up to the announcements. Chair recognizes the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman Chanel, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, if you are a member of the Ways and Means Committee or an author that has a bill in Ways and Means, this may be of some interest to you. Uh, this has to do with the first reading of bills. As most of you know, uh, in Ways and Means, we have, to, we have a committee rule that says bills have to be read twice before it's taken up by the full committee. Uh, you, have a, you should have a notice on your desk that due to the weather-related closures last week, as chairman of the committee, I'm assigning the following pieces of legislation to the subcommittee and waiving the requirement for first reading in the committee. The list uh, is numeric. It has the bills that have now been assigned without you having to come to the meeting. On the last column in the, in the sheet is the subcommittee chairs. Uh, authors of bills will be tasked, as always, with contacting the subcommittee chair to uh, schedule a second reading of the bill. Thanks. Chair recognizes Representative Pack for an announcement. Representative Pack. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Pack subcommittee of the Judiciary Non-Civil Committee will be meeting at 1 o'clock today at uh, room 132. Chair recognizes Chairman Rinders for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, everyone. The House Appropriations Subcommittee on General Government will meet today. That time will be at uh, 1.30 in room 415 of the LOB. 1.30, room 415. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Rules Committee, Chairman Meadows, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, there'll be a rules committee meeting in the morning at 9.30, Chair recognizes Chairman Cooper for an announcement. Chairman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Health and Human Services Committee will meet this afternoon at 3 o'clock in room 606 of the CLOB. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Jacobs for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Jacobs Subcommittee of the House Judiciary Committee will meet today at 1 p.m. in room 133 of the Capitol. That's the Ways and Means Committee room today at 1 p.m. Chair recognizes Chairman Morris for an announcement. Chairman Morris. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, House Banks and Banking Committee will meet today at 12.30 p.m. 341 here in the Capitol. We'll be hearing House Bill 750, House Bill 809, and House Bill 824. Now, tomorrow, uh, we will meet again at 2 p.m., 606 in CLOB to vote on these three bills. Hearing today and vote tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Maxwell for an announcement. Chairman Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Regulated Industries is gonna have the meeting we were scheduled to have last Wednesday, this afternoon, three o'clock in room 403. 403 upstairs in the corner. Regulated Industries, we're voting on two bills. Thank you.
Chair recognizes Representative Welch for an announcement. Representative Welch. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have a uh, Welch subcommittee meeting in room 515 CLOB at 4 o'clock. That completes announcements. That completes our announcements. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move this House now stand in recess until 5 o'clock p.m. today, at which time we shall adjourn until Tuesday morning at 10 p.m. February the 4th, 2004, excuse me, 10 a.m. Tuesday morning. February the 4th at uh, 2014. The majority leader has moved that this house will be in recess until 5 o'clock p.m. today, at which time we will adjourn until 10 o'clock a.m. Tuesday, February the 4th, 2014. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. This house will be in recess until 5 o'clock p.m whereupon we will stand adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow morning.